Hilarious. Okay, well, my name is Edgar. Um, I was born and raised in Mexico, so that's why the... There you go. All the Mexican army here. Uh, so it feels good that for the first time, I'm not the only guy with an accent. Hey, thanks, Europeans. That's awesome. It's amazing. Okay. Um, so I'm glad. I, today I get to share with you guys um, not only the impact that my student manager had on me, but I was also asked to share the, my story with you guys. Um, so just to begin with, uh, born and raised in, 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 I was born in Piedras Negras, which is a border town in Mexico, just right with Eagle Pass, Texas. And I was raised in Sabina, Coahuila. So I come from a family of entrepreneurs. Uh, my dad has a transportation business, a public transportation business. I mean, he started from nothing. So he really knew the value of working really, really, really hard. So ever since I was a little kid, like this big, um, he will send me and my brother, Daryl, who's also in the crowd, um, to wash the buses and to be the mechanic, change the tires, be the electric guy, uh, like be on the system behind the computer, see how many people will go on the buses and down the buses. And he will never, never buy anything for us. Like, I will have to buy, I will have to work so hard for my Nintendo 64 games. Woo! It's crazy, yeah. <laughs> but hey, you know, he really taught us the value of working really, really hard. And I really appreciate that. Um, by the time I was 14, he sent me to California so I could learn English, and I kind of did. You know, just, <laughs> just the accent stayed. Um, and then I came back, I finished high school in Mexico. And after that, I decided to move to the United States just for, uh, for university, just because, you know, Monterrey was kind of dangerous back in the day, four years, five years ago. Um, so anyways, when I was about 16, my dad left to a trip uh, to Spain, and he told me, Edgar, I want you to be in charge of my business uh, for this week. And it was great. You know, I was 16 years old, talking to 40 years old, like, okay, so what did you do today, you know? What's your report? And that's the moment that I wanted, you know, I decided this is what I want to do. I want to be an entrepreneur. Anyways, I moved to San Antonio, Texas, and I, I, I got an entrepreneurship degree over there. So what went into UTSA, a couple of things that I got to accomplish. She told you that I won one of the, it's a pitch competition where I, I get to pitch in 90 seconds a product um, in front of an audience. And it was really easy because I've done Southwestern, so it was really easy to sell something, right? So I, I ended up winning that competition. It was great. And then I also won a, a venture competition, which was like a Shark Tank-like competition where you get to, it was a team of engineers with two entrepreneurship students. We got to develop a product. We developed a sleep apnea uh, mask. And then we got to pitch it to you know, some judges, and we won. And it was really easy because I had sold books, and I knew how to relate to people. I knew how to go knock on businesses. I knew how to do research. I knew how to get turned down and get back up. And it, was, it, was just, it just made my, my job easier. Anyways, I just really appreciate my manager so much. Um, Ivan Luna, to tell you how he recruited me since I have you know, plenty of time. Um, it's funny. This is a funny story, okay? So I was so, I, I love dancing. So I was going to go to a country club just to go two-step and everything. And all my friends told me they were going to go. And at the last moment, again, humans. No, I guess, you know, I changed my mind. I don't really want to go dancing. Okay. So I'm like, I'm just going to go by myself. I don't care. And then I, I remember this guy, he was very upbeat, he really didn't care much. I'm like, yeah, I, I think he might be down. I call him up, hey, you want to go two-step dancing? Let's, you know, get some girls or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, yeah, I'm, I'm in. So we went to, you know, we went to Cowboys uh, Dance Hall in, in, in San Antonio. And this is how I got recruited. We were challenging each other to go ask a girl to dance. You know, okay, and he, like, I will point at a pretty one and he'll go, and then he'll point at another pretty and I'll go. And then I pointed at one, and he went, and right before going to, like, ask her to dance, he bails out. And, I'm, of course, I made fun of him, like, dude, come on, you know, what happened? And then I tell him, like, Ivan, you have to get out of your comfort zone. <laughs> you know? I was like, Ivan, you already have the no, you don't lose anything. And he got so upset, I'm like, there's like, I do this program, I sell books door to door, I know how to take notes, you should meet my manager, you should do it. And then I met Virgie Sanford and I got recruited. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it was awesome, it was awesome. Um, I just appreciate Ivan so much because he, he just has such a huge heart, you know. He has so much passion and it was, it was really the first time that someone really cared about me outside of my family circle that genuinely care about my future, not only about you know, Southwestern goals or how many units I wanted to hit or how many people I wanted to recruit the years after. He really cared about the, the person that I wanted to, that, that I could become, you know? 
whether it was a businessman or a good husband or a good parent, everything. He just, and to this day, you know, he's my clothier now. Um, until this day, he supports me in everything. You know, he just has a huge heart. Whoever knows, Ivan knows that he's always the life of the room. He's always like, you know, the life of the party. You just want to be around Ivan. So I really appreciate Ivan. If you get to see this video, I love you, man. Thank you for inviting me to, to, to do Southwestern. Um, but anyways, after that, I wanted that for myself. And then I wanted to meet, you know, meet people. I wanted to do that impact that he did on me, of course, like all of us. So when I was recruiting, I met this guy, Max Martinez. Some of you guys know him. And, you know, I was trying to recruit. That was the only one that really believed, with, you know, in me and really believed in, in the same vision that we had in changing people's lives. So we started recruiting. And we started recruiting. And then he told me, when, before I recruited him, he's like, you know, Edgar, I want to do this because by the time I graduate, I want to buy my own sailboat and sail across the Gulf of Mexico. And you're going with me. I'm like, okay, let's do it. So fast forward, you know, four years later, he bought his sailboat and I got to sail with him. It was awesome. Um, but anyways, uh, we, we tried and we tried, and it was one year, we, re we recruited a couple people, nobody's, you know, a couple people quit, a couple people didn't come back as managers, we tried again, and we tried again, because a couple of people have been asking me, how did you build a family, you know, in UT at UTSA, and it was just, not, it was not a matter of one year, it took all those years of hard work, all those years of hard work, so... Um, finally, you know, it was like, okay, what's not working? And if you guys want to take notes, I think the thing that worked out the best for us is that we really, really, really created a vision, a vision for our campus and a vision for our team. So, okay, we're like, UTSA is going to be the top 10 campus in the next four years, and this is year one. And our vision was that we were going to look for people that realize that short-term sacrifice equals long-term benefit. And we said it all over and over and over and over in every single info session and in every single training meeting and campus-wide. And now is year two for us. And now we're looking for the leaders that are gonna leave that legacy. And I'm looking for the best of the best. Not only people that realize that short-term sacrifice equals long-term benefit, I'm looking for the best of the best. So that vision, having that vivid vision really helped creating that culture. And it was amazing because now I have this team of, you know, seven awesome managers that are coming back um, that just really support me in everything and just support each other. It's amazing if you see the UTSA kids, they work out together. Yeah, they party together. They work together. They recruit together. They support each other in goals. We have these meetings every single Monday where we not talk about Southwestern. We just talk about life. And we take turns, one manager every week, to just share something with, uh, with the rest of us. That's it. Whether it's like momentum, like Pepe, or happiness, or awesomeness, we share something. And we keep each other accountable because we will tell our goals to each other every week. And the next week, we'll ask each other, did you do it? So it was amazing. It's amazing because I know these guys will be with me for the rest of my life, will be supporting me, will be helping me when I'm down, will be helping me you know, when I'm trying to look for, I, I don't know, Anything, you know, job, school, relationships, whatever. And that, guys, that you don't find in our companies. That cannot be bought with any kind of money. And that's why I'm still with Southwestern. So I encourage you to keep moving forward. Guys, it just feels really, really good when someone looks at you in the eye and genuinely tells you, Edgar, Jose, Dariel, whoever, I believe in you, and I believe in the person that you can become, okay? It feels amazing when someone outside of your circle tells you that and genuinely believes you and supports you to reach that goal. So please, I encourage you to do that for someone else. Thank you.